The focus of operations was Paisley Cross. Loading islands existed on the east side for Service 21. Whilst local Service 28 crossed at right angles. West of the cross was the narrow high street. Paisley West and its three track layout added by Glasgow Corporation. The rails from the cross to Eldersley were also used for depot journeys on service 28. Note the cardboard route number on this car. Showing a good turn of speed, a standard lurches magnificently through Paisley West. A Graham's bus en route for Linwood passes trams at Fergusley Mills. Eldersley Terminus, a 44-minute ride from Glasgow. Housed at Eldersley Depot was ex-Paisley car 1068, retained for preservation since 1953. It is now fully restored to original condition at the National Tramway Museum at Creich in Derbyshire. Latterly, Eldersley housed 18 coronations and 18 standards, plus the five experimental lightweights. These cars were latterly confined to P-car workings on Service 28. Here, 1003 takes up service in the autumn of 1956. The 28 required 22 cars in P-cars. Whereas the over-the-boundary services closed during 1956 had all incurred losses, the 28 returned a profit, earning it the nickname the Gold Mine. A bullion car was even employed, carrying the takings to the Bank of Scotland. The money being taken in under the watchful eye of depot clerk, Jim Caldwell. The 28 had been financially transformed in 1949 with the introduction of coronations, which had encouraged increased ridership. 1266 to 1283 were on the service for eight years. Also, road widening and post-war housing development further improved loadings as the trams held their own against a clutch of competing buses. The semi-rural nature of Glenfield Terminus could still evoke memories of the former line to cross stops closed in 1949. Cars heading north were soon filled with residents from Glenburn and Potter Hill Estates. Lockfield Road crossover. Canal Street Station, Paisley. Causey Side Street crossover was used by short working cars from both directions. One of the steepest grades on the Glasgow system was the one in 12 up St Mirren Street Bray on the south side of Paisley Cross.
Paisley Cross again, the hub of tramway operation. County Square. Cars for Renfrew made a right angle turn under Gilmore Street Station into Old Snedden Street. Then came the 34 yards of single track in Weir Street. Followed by another 90 degree turn into Renfrew Road. Abercorn Station. Approaching Paisley North, terminus of Service 4 since February 1954. Porterfield Road siding was opened in 1948 to accommodate PCAR specials and prevent hold-ups on the main road. Traffic was generated from the giant Babcock and Wilcox engineering works. At approximately 5.20, cars from Eldersley and Govan depots would line up in Porterfield Road and then over a seven-minute spell depart almost in convoy. These evocative scenes at Moor Park just south of Porterfield Road. Fully laden, lightweight number six, head south towards Paisley. Renfrew Cross and a four turns east for Govan. The imposing edifice of Renfrew Town Hall. Approaching Renfrew Ferry, northern terminus of the 28. Note the vehicles waiting to embark on the chain ferry to Yoker, only a short walk from trams on the busy Dumbarton Road. Twenty-seven minutes was allowed for the five and a quarter mile run to Glenfield. Renfrew Cross was terminus for service twenty-seven. approaching Renfrew Cross from Hillington Road. The 4 and 27 were now cut back to Hillington Road crossover at the city boundary. One of the last 21s is filmed leaving St Vincent Street, Glasgow on May the 11th, 1957. The former Paisley Company depot at Eldersley was closed, all its allocation going to other depots. The replacement of the 5 and 5A by bus service 43 continued the corporation's strategy to release 300 obsolete cars. In the distance, we see a 5A swinging onto the Great Western Road. This part of Hindland Road opened in 1924. The Hindland Shops at the junction with Clarence Drive. 
Byers Road at the junction with Hybra Road. These represented the first major withdrawals from Socky Hall Street, Charing Cross, and Renfield Street. The Transport Department's head office clock can be seen in the background. over Glasgow Bridge and heading towards Eglinton Toll. This busy junction was redesigned in 1946 with a central barrier. The five, five A's and 24's using Victoria Road on the east side. paved reservation on Battlefield Road and alongside Langside Depot. A brief glimpse of Prospect Hill Road with prototype Coronation 1142. Despite the spate of closures, the tram still dominated the central area in 1958. However, it was now estimated the last cars would operate in 1963. The first of the goddesses was scrapped during the year. Cunardas did not regularly appear on Argyle Street until mid-1958, when some of Govan's allocation was dispersed to other depots. The Kilmarnock bogies worked many duties on services 9 and 26, seen here approaching Burnside Terminus. Officially, 494 standards remained, with veterans like 751 of 1900 still in all-day operation. But between June 1957 and February 1959, over 200 were scrapped by Connells of Coatbridge. To reach the yard, doomed cars freewheeled across the main A8 at Bayliston, the wires having been cut, down onto the rusting rails of the former Langlone Reservation, there to be winched up into a special transporter cradle for the last few miles to the scrapyard. Until May 1957, cars have been scrapped at Eldersley, the last being 847. Glasgow possessed a large ancillary fleet, including driver instruction car 1017, an ex-Paisley double-decker of 1904, cut down to single-decker form in 1925. Twenty-seven, also ex-Paisley, was classified as a tool van. as was Sister Car 29. 21 was constructed from room and kitchen car parts in 1903. Inside Copler Hill Works in Easter 1958 was one of the original room and kitchen cars number 672 as Maine's test car number 3. Already set aside for preservation, it was eventually restored to run in the farewell procession in September 1962. Cars were still undergoing major overhauls and repaints.
Following fire damage, 1279 had a new replacement body built in late 1954. In 1958, the work still employed some 250 men, many now threatened by redundancy. Some were used to break up withdrawn cars. Others were kept working, assembling bodies for the replacing buses. The Permanent Way Department employed over 650 men. Most of the works fleet were nocturnal creatures, but in this remarkable sequence five set wagons are filmed together at dawn at Colston. The tip was opened in 1954. Cars 33, 35 and 37 were all built at Copla Hill during 1937 as set wagons. Mineral Wagon 25 dated from 1924 and incorporated parts from Paisley No. 40 of 1904. It was withdrawn in August. The approach to the tip was the last new stretch of street track laid in the city. The first closure of the year involved the six and a half mile 24, which was replaced by bus 44 on March the 16th. Alexander Skirving's neoclassical church overlooked Langside Terminus. Through the city, the 24 followed the same tracks as the former 5 and 5A. Note the British Railway's mechanical horse. The junction of Byers Road and Hyborough Road. Thirteen ten picks up passengers in Clarence Drive before turning into Hindland Road. Note the prefabs on the east side of Crow Road as a standard passes en route to Anisland Terminus. The 27 was also replaced on March the 16th by a new bus service 52. This closure marked the start of the rapid withdrawal of lines serving Governor Springburn. Within nine months, trams would no longer clatter over the Oswald Street, Argyle Street crossing on the west side of Central Station. nor would they cross the Clyde by cresting George V Bridge.
or negotiate the Commerce Street Nelson Street junction or rumble through the busy four-way junction at Paisley Road Toll. The 27 was still covered by other tram services, on the south side by the number 4. By Easter 1958, the five lightweights were out of service, but 1001 operated an enthusiast tour from Govan Depot over the 12 route miles in imminent danger of closure. Mount Florida. Note the former tracks which provided a connection to Langside Depot. Jorah Street, Bella Houston. The junction with Paisley Road West was formerly used by cars serving the 1938 Empire Exhibition. James Street Bridge. Milliston. The lightweights were now stored until scrapped on block in February 1959. Milliston was terminus for the nine-mile former yellow service 7, replaced by trolleybuses on the 15th of June 1958. It was called the Yellow Peril by staff because of its continual short-stage traffic. On its 54-minute journey to Bella Houston, it encountered most of the other Glasgow services on its lonely course through the city's east end and south side. Viewed from Alexandra Parade, a seven heads out of Cumbernauld Road bound for Milliston. These tracks survived for access to Deniston Depot. At Belgrove Street, the sevens diverged from Duke Street. At Abercrombie Street, a Cunarder edges onto London Road for the short run to Bridgeton Cross. Here, the Sevens executed a U-turn into James Street. All movements being controlled by a points box. The crossover was used by short workings and cars bound for Deniston Depot. Westward now, alongside Glasgow Green, Europe's oldest public park. Across the Clyde and into the Gorbals. looking up at James Street Bridge. Ballater Street. The junction with the Crown Street Trolleybus Services. Approaching Gorbals Cross under the railway bridge leading into St Enoch's. Tradeston and an eastbound 7 passes under the approach tracks to Glasgow Central Station. The 32 will turn north onto Glasgow Bridge. Nelson Street, Commerce Street Junction. Regular visitors to this area were Sam Dreyer cars 38 and 39 of 1939. 
These purpose-built vehicles conveyed sand from the drying plant housed in the former Kinning Park tram depot on Admiral Street. Their roofs were designed to fit beneath the hopper feed. Its load of dry sand protected by tarpaulin, 39 accelerates towards one of the surviving depots. Sand was released onto wet or greasy rails to provide extra adhesion, thereby reducing wheel slip. At Paisley Road Toll, the third track is used to cross over to the eastbound main line. Lorries took over these workings during 1958. Back with the Seven, now in Govan's Dockland. The final one and a quarter miles of the Yellow Peril twisted and turned to Bella Houston. The last 600 yards from Craigton Road Railway Bridge opened in 1938. Next to close was the former Blue Service 4, operating from Renfrew Road at Hillington Road to Springburn. It was replaced by Bus Service 53 after September the 6th. Cars reverse at the city boundary for the eight and a half mile journey to Springburn. Renfrew Road dated from 1926 and replaced old Renfrew Road, partly dug up to facilitate construction of the King George V dock, opened in 1931. Once, during a particularly powerful gale, a standard car was bodily lifted off the rails and thrown on its side on this exposed stretch of road. At the junction of Renfrew Road and Shield Hall Road, trams bisected the corner of the traffic island. Shield Hall Corner, junction for Old Renfrew Road, closed to trams in 1926. The section between Shield Hall and Govan was of considerable significance. The gauge had been fixed at 4 foot 7 and 3 quarters, allowing railway wagons to run on their flanges. The blue line shows the tracks used between Fairfield Shipbuilding and Engineering Works and Govan Goods Station. The red line indicates the tracks used by wagons passing between Alexander Stevens Shipbuilding Yard at Lindhouse and the Railway Goods Yard at Shield Hall. An 040 Andrew Barclay saddle tank was held in reserve by Stevens. Here it shunts onto the main Renfrew Road. Shield Hall Goods Yard lay some 500 yards in the distance. It was one of the few instances where railway trains and trams used tracks in the streets. Half a mile further east, an electric steeple cab of 1940 was employed to haul material along 500 yards of street track between Fairfields and Govan Goods Yard. Govan Cross. En route to and from the city, the four ran alongside Govan Dry Dock. The east end of Prince's Dock on Govan Road, site of the 1988 Garden Festival, through Paisley Road Toll, outbound from Commerce Street into Nelson Street,
and over George V Bridge. In the north, the four shared tracks with three other services to Moss House. Then only with service 16 along Keppock Hill Road. Here a Cunarda turns from Springburn Road into Keppock Hill Road. Then up the busy Springburn Road, past the still active North British Locomotive Works, to the terminal stub at Elm Vale Street, Springburn. Cars travelling beyond were bound for Bishop Briggs. In October 1958, the corporation's Pinkston Power Station was handed over to the South of Scotland Electricity Board, although its prime function was still to generate power for the trams, trolleybuses and underground. The closures of the 14th and 15th of November 1958 eliminated all passenger operation in Govan. Three services were involved. The Cross City 22 and 32 were replaced by bus services 54 and 55, the out-of-town service 12 by Trolleybus 108, and also closed without replacement was the 17 from Farm Cross to Annie's Land. Friday the 14th of November marked the end of the PCAR only 12s from Shield Hall to Mount Florida. Here a car is seen leaving Shield Hall travelling towards Paisley Road Toll via Lawn School. A 17 at Farm Cross. This stub continued to be used by the 26, diverted from Shawfield. Note the pointsman's cabin at Bridgeton Cross, disused since closure of the 7 in June. At Partick, the 17 turned north, climbing up to Broomhill Cross and the junction with the former service 24. Crow Road and passing beneath the two railway bridges at Jordan Hill. Annie's Land Terminus. The last two services operating via the city into the Govan area were the 22 and 32. The 32 ran nine and a half miles from Bishop Briggs, seen here, via Springburn. Approaching Hawthorne Street, Springburn, and passing Elm Vale Street. The 22 was also nine and a half miles long to Lamb Hill, with its unusual facing crossover. In the city, the 22 joined the throng in Hope Street and was the last service crossing to the south side over George V Bridge. The 32 used Glasgow Bridge before turning west from Bridge Street into Nelson Street. Paisley Road Toll.
From here, both services ran along Paisley Road West for over three miles to Crookston. Crookston Road Terminus. The bustling two and a half mile former yellow service 12 started in Mount Florida, deep in trolleybus territory. From here, it headed south on Cathcart Road. Latterly, some of the worst track on the Glasgow system. The right angle curve from Allison Street into Cathcart Road. Crossing Pollockshaws Road. An outbound 12 eases out of Shields Road into Nithsdale Road. Another junction, this time a diamond crossing with the three at Albert Drive. Shields Road had two points of interest. Part of the grade was one in 12. and the lower part was distinguished by elegant Edwardian centre poles, the only other examples being on Glasgow Bridge. Note the functional trolleybus bracket arm poles already in situ. Note the old underground station and the corporation body Daimler. The final part of the 60-minute journey on Service 12 to Paisley Road toll was marked by four tightly angled curves which restricted operation to standard cars only. Leaving Paisley Road toll terminus. Govan Depot, maximum capacity, 128 cars. Note rebuilt standard 143 of 1944. Closed to service cars after the 15th of November, it housed trams awaiting scrap until the end of February 1959. Structurally little altered, the building still survives in 1992. Govan itself has changed considerably following the rundown of the docks and the shipyards. Interestingly, trams returned to the area in 1988 on the occasion of the Glasgow Garden Festival, located on the site of the former Prince's Dock. Included in the operational fleet was a restored Cunarda a class much associated with the Govan area in latter days. More footage of the festival will appear in Glasgow Trams Part 2.
from the middle of 1958, Govan's allocation of Cunardas dispersed to other depots had begun to appear on Argyle Street for the first time, releasing more and more standards for scrap. 300, however, were officially still in stock. Most of the Kilmarnocks were still soldiering on on services 9 and 26. Heavy inroads were made into the Liverpool cars during the year. Eight two six in its sixtieth year, and ten forty five in its twenty fourth year were both scrapped during nineteen fifty nine. A comparatively rare sighting of a standard on the twenty three, usually a preserve of the coronations. Three three four was rebuilt in nineteen forty six with flush side panels. The top of Renfield Street. The body of this replacement coronation was still only five years old. On board a coronation. Apart from specials, Standard still worked all duties on the one and thirty. The route mileage had been reduced to 75, with 12 still outside the city boundary. The first abandonment of 1959 was somewhat unexpected and involved the short university branch closed to facilitate reconstruction of Eldon Street Bridge on January the 4th. The two services terminating at the university, the 3 and 14, were diverted to nearby crossovers at Park Road and Kelvin Grove. A car turns into Gibson Street for the 300-yard run down to Eldon Street and Woodlands Road. The 10-mile Cross City former Red Service 8 was replaced by bus 38 on March the 14th, 1959. Milliston Terminus lay just outside the city boundary. Inbound towards Ridgery, cars passed Hoganfield Loch, a popular destination for trippers. The junction of Smithycroft Road and Cumbernauld Road. The tracks up to Ridgery remain for peak hour journeys on service six.